Your brain is amazing. And if you're studying the brain, it's important to start with the major parts as well as their functions. And that's exactly what you're going to know by the end of this video. So let's do it. Hey, this is Leslie Samuel from Interactive Biology, where we're making biology fun, and let's dive into the brain. Yes, the brain. It's the main control center of the body, and it's part of the central nervous system along with its partner in crime, the spinal cord. And when you look at the brain, you see a gray structure that makes up most of the mass of the brain. That structure is called the cerebrum. The cerebrum is responsible for integrating a whole lot of complex sensory and neural info, as well as coordinating all of the things that you do voluntarily. You want to move? Your cerebrum is involved. You want to chill out? Your cerebrum is involved. You want to watch this video thinking about how awesome your cerebrum is? Well, your cerebrum is involved with that too. Now, the feature that you notice most about the surface of the brain is that it's wrinkled. Well, that entire wrinkled surface is called the cerebral cortex. That's the superficial part. And you'll also notice that the cerebrum is divided into two halves. That separation part, this long line from the front all the way to the back that separates the cerebrum into the two halves, is called the longitudinal fissure. And the two halves are called hemispheres. You have the left cerebral hemisphere, and the right cerebral hemisphere, commonly called the left and right brain. Now, those two hemispheres are actually connected by a bundle of nerve fibers that we call the corpus callosum. And this allows for the left and right hemispheres to communicate. Okay, let's get back to the cerebral cortex. As I mentioned, it's very wrinkled. It has a bunch of grooves and a bunch of ridges. The grooves are called sulci, which is the plural of sulcus, and the ridges are called gyri, which is the plural of gyrus. This wrinkled structure, which basically involves the folding of the cortex, accomplishes one very important thing. It increases the surface area of the cortex of the brain. Now, as we look further at the cerebral cortex, we're going to see that in addition to all these smaller sulci, we also have two more distinct sulci that separate the cortex into distinct lobes. We have the central sulcus that separates the parietal lobe from the frontal lobe, and we have the lateral sulcus which separates the temporal lobe from the other lobes. There's also one other lobe, that's the occipital lobe. That's the posterior region of the cortex. Now, looking at the brain from the outer surface, you don't see any major sulcus that's separating the occipital lobe and the parietal lobe. But if you were to look from the medial surface, you'll see that there's a parietal occipital sulcus. Okay, so those are the parts of the cerebrum. But what are their functions? Let's dig into that a little. The frontal lobe, this is the part that's involved with higher level processing. Things like thought, reasoning, planning things out, speech, movement, emotions problem solving. These are all very complex processes and the frontal lobe is primarily responsible in making those things happen. Then there's the parietal lobe. This is involved in movement, orientation, recognition, and perception. There's the occipital lobe. Now, that's very important for visual processing. The visual cortex is found here. Signals that are coming from your eyes come to the visual cortex for processing. This is where you actually see. It's why if you get hit in the back of your head, you sometimes start seeing stars. That's a physical stimulus, but it's stimulating the visual cortex, and you actually see something. And lastly, the temporal lobe that's involved in auditory perception, which I think is cool because your ears are like right there. It's also involved in memory and speech. Now, keep in mind, all of this is a tremendous oversimplification, but it gives you a general idea of what's happening in the cerebrum. But the cerebrum is not the only part of the brain. Yeah, we have other parts, but we don't want this to be like a ridiculously long video. But in a future video, we're going to dive into the other major parts. So make sure to subscribe so that you can check that one out when it comes out. My name is Leslie Samuel from Interactive Biology, where we're making biology fun. That's it for this video, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.